You <laughs> did. You guys made it. Welcome. My name is uh, Jordan. You can call me Pastor Jordan, Reverend Jordan, or just Jordan. Um, and uh, I'm the pastor here at West Glenville Reformed Church. Um, and on behalf of uh, our whole congregation, of which Steve and Ginny are uh, a vital part, we would like to just welcome you here today and say thanks for being with us for this celebration of marriage. We are we're blessed to be able to uh, celebrate such uh, good news in the world and in the lives of these two and these beautiful families that are gathered here today. And so uh, I'd just like to welcome you in. And uh, I would also uh, let you know that we are broadcasting live on our YouTube live stream. So if anybody's out there watching, we welcome you as well. You can give them a wave. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and this is going to be on YouTube in perpetuity forever. So <laughs> if you want to rewatch those times that I mix up the words and whatever, and it's a good laugh, go for it. It's going to be on there forever. So um, you, uh, I'll invite you to have a seat, um, make yourselves comfortable. And uh, we are gathered here today. Yeah, you can, you can sit down. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gathered here today in, in a time of worship and celebration. This really is a celebration of God's work in the world, the way that God's love plays out um, in, in the world around us, not just um, sort of throughout day-to-day -day life, but in particular today we celebrate how God's love is present in the lives of these two individuals as they've come forward um, to be wed this morning, and it's a, it's a blessing that we're here together. Uh, we keep things pretty loose here at West Glenville Reformed Church, so um, if we drop the rings and they roll around, we'll find them, um, you know. Keep your knees bent, all you people in the thing. You don't want to pass out, it's on YouTube. Um, it'll go viral, so. <laughs> uh, but we keep things loose because we know that we are here for a celebration, that God's present in this uh, person of the Holy Spirit, and because of that, nothing, uh, nothing can fail us this morning. So we will begin with our call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now listen for our statement of purpose. And this is just in case you're wondering what we're all doing here. <laughs> we have come together in the presence of God for the marriage of Ginny and Steve to share their joy and to promise them our support and love. Christian marriage is a joyful covenanting between two beloved children of God. In this covenant, they proclaim before God and human witnesses their commitment to live together in spiritual, physical, and material unity. In this covenant, they acknowledge that the great love God has shown for each of them enables them to love each other. They affirm that God's gracious presence and abiding power are needed for them to keep their vows to continue to live in love, and to be faithful servants of Christ in this world. Human commitment is fragile, and human love imperfect. But the promise of God is eternal, and the love of God can bring our love to perfection. Let us pray. Gracious God, who gives the covenant of marriage, be with us now as we celebrate the marriage of Ginny and Steve. Give them your blessing. Grant them happiness and long life together and help us support them with your love. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so now we come to the, the part of our service where uh, the two who are gathered here today declare their intent. Uh, we have an idea of the intentions uh, behind why they're here, but uh, this is a way for us to, to speak it out loud. All, all of that which happens today is, is about uh, bearing witness, that you all are here to to witness this proclamation between the two of them. And so, listen now for our declarations of intent. Steve, do you take Ginny to be your wife? I do. All right. Will you love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. All right. Ginny, do you take Steve to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. All right. Now, uh, we address the children of the couple. And so, uh, Shane, Austin, Ben, Tim, and Grace, will you accept and support this marriage? If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. All right. 
Now, Ginny and Steve, they've just taken vows uh, to support you, and so now you take vows to care for them as, as your families uh, come together in a, an official way. You've been a family for a long time now, but now you bring them together officially. And so um, take these vows. Ginny and Steve, will you be faithful and loving parents to Shane, Austin, Ben, Tim, Matt, and Grace, and all of their attached others? If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. All right. Great. Now, everybody up here has taken their vows, so now it's your turn. So I invite you to rise. And Steve and Jenny and, and everybody, look at, look at these people. This, is, this isn't your whole crew, but this is a good chunk of it. And these are your people, and they're here. Uh, look at them. They're all smiling. They're happy to be here today, right? This is, this, these are your people here to celebrate this with you, but, but they're not just here today. This, this crew of people, your, your tribe, your clan, they're going to go with you through the rest of your days, and supporting you and, and the love that you have for one another. And, and so it's a beautiful thing that they're here and and you all get to take vows on their behalf. And when you speak your response, I invite you to do it with a little bit of fervor and gusto. That's how we do it here. Uh, no vows are taken lightly at this church. Will you, their friends and family, support this couple now and in the years ahead? If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. All right. Amen. You may be seated. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to invite uh, Kathy, Steve's sister. She's going to read some scripture for us. Before we do that, uh, we'll ask the Lord uh, to illumine these words of scripture, uh, that the word of God might be spoken to us all uh, in the ways that we need to hear it. So let us pray now our prayer for illumination. God, we ask that you would speak to us today through these words. In particular, we ask that you would speak to... Steve and to Ginny and to their families as they take vows, as they make commitments, as they declare uh, your love being played out in their lives. May these words of scripture bear meaning, not only for this occasion, but for all the days that lie ahead. In the name of God the Father, through Jesus Christ the Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Kathy, you can come forward and share our reading today. This is from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 10 through 13, and chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of one's house, it would be utterly scorned. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Now's the time, I promised I'd keep my sermon under 45 minutes, so um, we, uh, we have a homily in our, in our wedding liturgy where uh, I just share a little bit. Um, it's for Ginny and Steve, though. It's for the two of you, and you're just kind of listening in. Uh, but uh, but this, is our, this is our word for the morning, um, having heard that scripture. Ginny and Steve, let me start today by saying that I'm honored and privileged to be here to celebrate this wonderful, joyous, happy occasion with you and all your loved ones. This truly is a glorious celebration on a glorious day, and I consider myself blessed, personally, uh, to be the one that you have invited to share in this part of your journey together. 
Also, I consider myself privileged to have had the joy of getting to know you both over the last year or two as you've become more and more a part of the community here at West Glendale Reformed Church. We are blessed uh, to have, we don't have a whole lot of members of our congregation, but Lila's here, she's my daughter, so well, we've, been, we've been really happy to welcome these folks into our church family, and so it's a blessing. It's lovely to see how the Lord works in our lives, bringing us together to walk through this journey of life. Through all the good and the bad times, we are never alone. Not only does God's presence never leave us, but at times when we need it the most, God gives us a companion to walk the journey with. Whether that be in the form of a faith community, our church here, or a beloved other to share in life stays with, the Lord is faithful to provide for us that which we need at the time which we need it. And so it's with that idea in mind that I invite us now to turn our focus to the real meaning of this celebration. As you both know, and the rest of the gathered people uh, will soon know, I like to start off all of my preaching sessions with a question. And so today, my question is this, and this is for everybody. What are you doing here? Right? I've asked this question before here at this church. Uh, I asked this question of myself the very first time I ever found myself in that pulpit right behind me preaching a sermon. I said, what am I doing here? It seemed fairly unlikely in my life that I would end up as a minister standing in a pulpit preaching to a congregation, and yet there I was. So I asked the question, what am I doing here? Then I've asked it of this congregation several times over the years as we've gathered for worship. I've said, what are you doing here? And so I ask the congregation at different times, what are, what are they doing here? What's their purpose and reason for participating in this church and the worship here. And so then I ask the question of all of us gathered here today, what are you doing here? For some of you, the answer might be simple, because Ginny and Steve said so, right? <laughs> you can raise your hand if that's the answer, right? <laughs> Perhaps you're just really good listeners. You're close friends, a loving family, and you would do whatever these two ask of you, and so you're here. Or uh, perhaps you just really like weddings or a good party, right? And that's why you decided to, to be here for this today. Or perhaps you're like me and you're a hopeless romantic, taking any chance you can get to see love blossom and flourish. But however you answer, the common thing you share is that you're here because of love. Love for Ginny and Steve and for the celebration of love that they share. You see, love has brought you here today, all who are gathered. Now, Ginny and Steve, I direct the question a little more intentionally to the two of you. What are you doing here? You've both come through life's trials. We spent some time talking about that when we met, your stories of, of the past. There have been other relationships in your lives that have not lasted. There has been pain and sadness in both of your lives. There have been dark days and moments of despair. So, the question that I pose weighs more heavily, doesn't it? What indeed are you doing here? Wouldn't it be better, maybe easier, and surely a whole lot safer to just go it alone? Play it safe? Keep your hearts protected? But as rational as all that sounds, clearly you've made a different choice. You chose to stand here today gathered with your friends and family. All of those that mean the most to you, take a moment and look around. Check out this beautiful family you got surrounding you here today. And all these smiling faces. They're still smiling, so that's a good sign, right? All of these that mean so much to you are gathered here today, and you've chosen to make proclamations of love and care for each other for the rest of your lives. So really, what are you doing here? Well, I'm certain that the answer to that question is a vast one with a story that could be told over many years. But I think that part of the answer lies in the scripture that we just heard. In those words, we hear about the season being ripe for flowers and turtle doves and fig trees. We hear that the season for singing is upon us. The time to make the beautiful music of life and of nature is here. 
And it's a fitting scripture for this season of spring as the world comes alive around us. I think even now we can hear some birds chirping outside. So perhaps that's part of it. Perhaps the season is just right now for the two of you to be standing here in this little country church with your closest people all around you making this proclamation for the world to see. And that's kind of it, right? That's part of it. You've talked to me about how this is something where you've decided for a long time and now it's a, a, the time is right. The season has come. Perhaps all that led you to this moment, though, is just a part of what crafted you both into exactly the companion each of you needed for the rest of the journey. Perhaps this is just the right season for such a flower to blossom in your lives. But I wonder also if maybe there's more. Perhaps it has to do with that second part of the scripture that you chose for today. Perhaps it has to do with the unquenchable nature of love. You see, the scripture that we just heard tells us that love is strong as death and that many waters cannot quench love. You see, I'm here today to make a proclamation along with the both of you. I'm here to proclaim that the love you share is not just your own human love, but God's love. You share God's love with one another. And as I often like to say, how cool is that, right? That's one of the things I say when I'm preaching all the time. <clears throat> and so because you share in God's love with one another, the love that you share is unmovable, all-powerful, and unquenchable. Many waters, even floods, as the scriptures say, can't put out the fire of love that you two share because the love that you share is the perfect love used to craft the very cosmos in which we dwell. The love you share is God love. And so, you couldn't not share it. You couldn't not be here today. This had to happen. This celebration, this day, this love, these years to come in the days that lie ahead, they were all part of God's plan for the sharing of God's love in the world. And so, Ginny and Steve, go forth knowing that the love that you share Though it is yours to share freely with one another, it does not originate with you. You share with one another the greatest gift known to humankind, God's love. Let that be your anchor in the days that lie ahead. Through the joyful moments, through the trying ones, let God's love and God's light illumine both of your lives to the fullest in each and every day that lies ahead. For as sure as the sun shines above today, indeed, the time for singing has come. Amen. And indeed, the time of singing has come. We are going to sing together a song that they've picked out. You guys can grab those red hymn books there if you're up here in the wedding party. Um, and all of you who are gathered out there can rise and find number 316 in the red hymn book. And we're going to sing a song together. When love is found and hope comes home, sing and be glad that two are one. When love explodes and fills the sky, praise God and share our Maker's joy. When love has flowered in trust and care, build both each day that love may dare to reach beyond home's warmth and light to serve and strive for truth and right. When love is tried, change hold still to hope though all seems 
strange till he returns and love grows wise through listening ears and open eyes when love is torn and trust betrayed pray sake to love till torments fade till lovers keep no score All right, well, this is the part where you join hands, but you don't have to if your hands are full. That's, that's totally okay. <laughs> Ginny and Steve, having joined hands and in faith, now make your promises to each other. Steve, you get to go first. Thanks. Just repeat after me. You're going to be fine. <laughs> will exchange rings. And so, Steve, I ask you this question. What do you bring as a sign of your promise? A ring. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the liturgy. I'm waiting for somebody at some point to say something else, you know? <laughs> like an old John Deere tractor or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Steve, allow me to take the ring for a moment. We have uh, also within our liturgy this really nice part where we ask God's blessing on the giving of this ring. So we ask the Lord to be a part of this. And so I say these words, Bless, O Lord, the giving of this ring, that he who gives it and she who wears it may live in love and faithfulness all their days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll give you that. And Steve, repeat after me these words. a sign of your promise. Okay. All right. Same answer. That's good. Bless, O oh Lord, the giving of this ring, that she who gives it and he who wears it may live in love and faithfulness all their days through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
All right. You guys did everything. You checked all the boxes. So that means that I get to say these words. Virginia and Stephen have made their covenant of marriage together before God and all here present through solemn vows with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings. Therefore, I declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Steve, you may now kiss the bride. <laughs> And just so that, it's, so that it's spoken for all to hear, let no one come between those whom God has joined together. Let us pray. Eternal God, without your grace, no promise is sure. Strengthen Ginny and Steve with patience, kindness, gentleness, and all other gifts of your spirit, so that they may fulfill the vows they have made. Fill them with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome. Guide them by your word to serve you all their days. Gracious God, you are merciful and forgiving. Grant that Ginny and Steve, their families, and all who care for them may accept your generous love. Heal their memories. Comfort them. And send them all from here renewed and hopeful. Help us all, O oh God, to do your will in each of our homes and lives. Enrich us with your grace so that supporting one another, we may serve those in need hastening the coming of peace, love, and justice on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, because we have something of a musical family here, we've, uh, we've got a little special music prepared that uh, Tim is going to share with us now. And this, uh, this is a song by Steve Earle called Every Part of Me. Yeah, go for it, man. <laughs> Across the universe I'll spin And around the world man I wonder If we should get another chance To have this dance forever under I love you with all my heart All my soul Every part of me Well, 
that was a lovely way to start your marriage, wasn't it? Yeah. First moment ever. It's a beautiful song sung by, uh, by one of your beloved children. That's, that's a blessing. Um, and so the, our service being concluded, this, this part of the celebration being over, we now move on to a new one. And so on your way out, I invite you to rise and receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is my pleasure to announce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Steve and Ginny Roden. You guys are good clappers. Way to go. So uh, they asked me to share a short announcement with you. Um, they're going to be taking some pictures out on the front lawn. Uh, there's also a shuttle that will be taking up to the uh, Cock and Bull restaurant where the reception is being held. So uh, the first shuttle has eight seats. It's going up and it's coming back here at 4 o'clock. So you could get that ride if you want to or you can just drive yourself up. I think they passed out some directions for you in case you're not sure where you're going. So, uh, But yeah, go ahead and greet them and uh, we'll head up to the Cock and Bull in a few minutes. Thanks for being with us today. Have a blessed day, everybody. Yeah.